one of the documents that they have on their website, this is the key facts statement, right here under product type, it is a paper gold scheme. It tells you everything you uh, need to know. I, I love the word scheme in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a paper gold scheme, and they're just admitting this. Hi, this is Mike Maloney, and I've got Alan Hibbard once again, and Alan has a big surprise for us. Alan, how are you doing? I'm great, Mike. Thanks. How are you? Doing awesome. Yeah, up here on the farm. Beautiful. Well, I just found out today that HSBC has tokenized gold and they are claiming bragging rights for being the first bank to do so. So basically they've put gold on their own blockchain and they're saying that they're the first bank to put a real world asset on a blockchain. And so I just heard about this. I dug into it a little bit and I think we should share it with our audience. Awesome. You know, um, <clears throat> they are bragging that they are the first bank, but people have been uh, trying to do this for a long time. There are some uh, blockchain based uh, asset, you know, gold out there. Uh, we were trying to do this back in 2014 at goldsilver.com as far as putting it on blockchain. Uh, but you have all these problems that you have to overcome with the Securities and Exchange Commission, with the Commodities Futures Trading Commission. Uh, so the SEC and the CFTC. Uh, um, there's a whole bunch of hurdles and millions of dollars that you have to spend to make it compliant. And uh, so uh, we just dropped it. Anyway, go ahead and, and uh, show us this thing. Yeah, it's definitely uh, something to, it's, it's something impressive to accomplish, a lot of technical challenges and bureaucratic challenges to overcome. But there's sort of that major question of, is it worth doing? Like, is it actually good for the investor? So let's dive yeah. into those specifics and people yep. can make their own decisions. It does say that HSDC is tokenizing gold for everyday investors. Now, those everyday investors are the same investors that have been duped into buying uh, stocks and bonds that are just IOUs for stocks and bonds. They think that, you know, if you read The Great Taking and you look at all the laws and, and uh, regulations and, uh, and new features that have been put in place, uh, it's all set up to where all you're seeing is IOUs for stocks, bonds, ETFs, mutual funds, uh, and that the brokerage houses that are running this thing can use those as collateral any at any moment during an emergency. And uh, so run us through this real quick. This looks really interesting. Yeah, definitely. So first of all, if you go to HSBC's website, you can poke a little poke around a little bit and you can find this, the gold token. And one of the first things I noticed under things you should know is that in order to be able to trade this token, you need to have an active HSBC Hong Kong investment account and Hong Kong residential address registered with the bank. You are not eligible if you are a US citizen, a US resident, a US taxpayer, or have US nationality or a US address. So this is for Hong Kong only, not the United States and not the majority of the world. Uh this, this thing where they're pointing out U.S., 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 and they're not naming any other country. It's just the U.S. Our country has built this. It's not just a moat. It's a cage around us. And so they're keeping us inside this sphere uh, where basically we are now the asset. We bet the, the uh, citizens of the United States back everything. There's nothing behind the currency. There's really nothing. The, the, you, you think you own a piece of a company when you've got shares in a company on a stock, on a trading platform, and you don't. You, want to owe an IO, you own an IOU from the brokerage house for shares in the company. But you know, should something happen, you become a creditor. Of, I, I, I mean, look at what happened to Lehman. That's all you have to look at, and uh, you, you understand this. So yeah. go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Oh, no worries. No worries. Um, there's, that reminds me of a, a great line from the sovereign individual where they say that uh, eventually countries will have to start treating their citizens like customers to be satisfied and not like cows to be milked. Ah, Doug Casey says, watch for the day when they stop treating you like a milk cow and start treating you like beef cattle. 
<laughs> yeah. and, Ooh, that would hurt. Really right. But the thing is that, I mean, it just shows you the whole monetary system is fundamentally evil. And now they've built this corral around U.S. citizens only over and over again in this statement. U.S. citizen, U.S. citizen, U.S. resident, U.S. taxpayer. Uh, uh, it's specifically pointed at excluding U.S. citizens because the U.S. has built this cage around us so that in an emergency, they can stop treating us like milk cows and start treating us like beef cattle. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right. Well, let's for a moment put uh, residency and nationality aside and just look at the uh, specifics of the investment. This drop down here has five different important documents. So I looked through those briefly. And one of them is this one, the principal brochure. And I wanted to just read one of the most important things they have on the first and second page. They say here, you should note that an investment in this product is not the same as acquiring a physical gold bar. That's important. In particular, under the product, investors acquire only fractional ownership of the gold. When compared to directly acquiring a physical gold bar, investors holding only fractional ownership of the gold represented by these tokens will be subject to certain limitations, including, but not limited to, these ones. Okay, so these are additional limitations you have with this product that you wouldn't have if you own physical gold. Investors will not have the ability to take physical possession or delivery of the gold at any point, even in the case of insolvency wow. of the bank. Wow. <laughs> I mean, wow. Uh, I mean, we could kind of stop there. I'd be like, okay, no, this investment's not for me. <laughs> well, so, uh, I don't I never give advice, but it's definitely not for me. I would be running, not walking in the opposite direction right now. But uh, keep uh, this, this suggests to me that uh, the banks have first lean on this. And should the bank be insolvent, uh, this becomes one of their assets that's liquidated. And then you become a creditor of the bank. In other words, this is a securitized uh, token. And, um, uh, but go ahead. I'm sorry I interrupted again. <laughs> no, no worries. So, so even in the case of insolvency of the bank, in which case an appointed disposal agent will be obligated under a certain agreement to liquidate the gold and distribute the proceeds to the investors. So you wouldn't get the gold wow. in the case of an insolvency. They would be forced to sell the gold possibly at a, a discount to spot price. Uh, and yes, then when they're forced to sell the gold, does that go in with all the other assets of the bank? And then all of the, uh, you know, what usually happens is the attorneys, the other creditors are standing in front of you and you as the, as a depositor in the bank, if you've got um, a savings account or a checking account or anything where you, the, the bank has your assets, you're just a one of the creditors standing in line, but you're at the end of the line. There's a whole bunch of other people in front of you that get paid first. Some of them get paid in full, they get made whole. And whatever's left after everybody else has taken their bite uh, is, is what gets split out to the final investors in this case, or depositors in the case of savings and checking. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the next section here, investors can only trade the gold represented by the HSBC gold token via the bank. So you can only trade this via HSBC. You can't sell it anywhere else. And huh. you're subject to three constraints. The price of the gold represented by the tokens is determined by the bank according to the pricing mechanism of the product. So they, <laughs> HSBC chooses the value of the product you're buying. Wow. Wow. Uh, so they do have a pricing mechanism and, you know, we can look yeah, into that. Right there. I would say that this isn't gold. Of course not. Right. <laughs> yeah, of course not. It's right. kind of like price exposure to gold, sort of. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Keep on going. Any, any trading outside the gold trading hours, but you can think of it as like business hours, will be subject to a higher bank margin. So of 5% at maximum. So I looked into this. Ordinarily, there's a 2% fee on these transactions. But if you trade when the markets are closed, so to speak, wow. you, pay, you can pay up to 5% to make that transaction. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's a steep, steep fee. Um, you're also subject you know, to sus suspension I, of dealing. 
I got to say something. Um, we came up with Instavault a long, long time ago, and <clears throat> our fees are lower than this. This is, uh, I mean, uh, and it's held in private bailment. It's it's uh, at Brinks, and Brinks, it's a third-party depository. Um, uh, is, this is held in their vaults, right? Um, I'm not vaults? sure. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, well, um, if it is, there's a possibility that it can be rehypothecated. Uh, you know, like GLD, for instance, uh, you can short GLD. And when something is shorted, the brokerage house goes into your account. They borrow your shares. If, if your account is margin enabled, you've given them permission to do this. They borrow your shares, which are supposed to represent gold in your account. They loan them to uh, another uh, trader who then sells them into the market short and the new buyer owns your ounces. <laughs> so two people own the same ounces. Uh, and so it's, it's being rehypothecated. Uh, it isn't, these things, none of them are real gold. And so this is supposed to be real gold on a blockchain. Um, keep, uh, <clears throat> with, with Instavault, it's held in bailment. So it's at Brinks. Brinks is not part of the banking system. Uh, it is it, during the bank holiday that happened during the week of 9-11. The banks were all closed for a week. You did not have access to anything at the bank. Safe deposit boxes, your checking account, the ATMs all ran out of cash right away. And so for a week, you were stranded. But Brinks was open and they were delivering to all of the coin shops and stuff. And the coin shops, people were scared. There were more buyers than sellers of gold. And even though the banks... Uh, weren't open, the coin shops were flush with cash. If you had gold or silver, they both rose significantly that week, and you could go in and, and sell that for cash because the the uh, coin shops all had cash. So, uh, um, you know, I'm becoming more and more wary all the time of the banking system. Uh, and uh, this is not being held in bailment where it's actually segregated and under your name so that you are the only owner of that uh, precious metals. And, you know, we do the billing for Brinks. Brinks doesn't want to get involved with the billing, but we don't own the account. We have no claim on it whatsoever. Uh, if, if we, for some reason, goldsilver.com went away, you're not standing in line as a creditor like you would be with this bank. You still own your gold at Brinks. Yeah, that's a critical distinction that a lot of people overlook. So, yeah, huge. Um, yeah. And la last one here is that uh, suspension of dealing may be imposed by the bank. So HSBC Whoa. could just they could just halt trading and say, oh, no, no, no more buy orders, no more sell orders uh, until further notice. So that's not gold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then you're stuck. Well, right. I love holding a little bit and then having the rest it brings where it's highly, highly liquid and, and it can be the, uh, it can be sold and a price locked in instantly. And then, you know, it takes a little while for the cash to go uh, from Brinks to us and then back to your account. But still, it's uh, as liquid, if not more so than a stock. Yeah. Yeah. And all these things we're talking about were nicely summarized uh, in a tweet by Bob Coleman. He uh, reminds uh, us that HSBC's latest gold token, he says, remember, most blockchain programs add counterparty layers, not remove them. Is this product any different? No. And then he copies and pastes um, some of the things we just read through from that document itself. So yeah, it's like this is gold plus a whole lot of layers of risk. Well, it's not even real gold. It's, it's pretend gold plus all these elements of risk. So it is a completely different investment. Wow. Yeah. And some people might ask, okay, well, what about the use of the blockchain or their special ledger? Does that um, somehow make it more sophisticated? Well, I mean, sophisticated is one thing, but a good investment is another. So I pulled out this section here on the utility of the ledger and regulatory nature of the product. So all HSBC gold tokens will be recorded on an in-house, private, permissioned ledger. Okay, so this is not an open, public, permissionless ledger, something like Bitcoin. This is a private ledger. 
Yeah, this is a centralized ledger utilizing distributed ledger technology. So the technology that was developed uh, for Bitcoin, which is the world's first uh, full consensus distributed ledger. Uh, and, you know, it exists all over the planet and all the ledgers are exactly the same. And that's what makes the technology so, so revolutionary and so useful. Uh, and now they've taken that and they've centralized it. So it's not a DLT, it's a CLT. <laughs> yeah. It's, just, yeah, it's, it's centralized it's... ledger technology, which what? Is that what they've been doing forever? Um, I mean, essentially, when you think about any business and their record keeping, whether it's a bank or anything else, they have a centralized ledger. Usually it's pen and paper and then it became computers, but it's a centralized ledger. And this seems like just the next evolution of the same type of thing. Yes. Um, but it's not gold. It's not gold. It's just them keeping records of money or currency that you've exchanged with them for, you know, um, not gold. So anyway, let me just continue here. For the avoidance of doubt, any reference to a sale and purchase of HSBC gold tokens in the offering documents of the product is in fact and should also be read as the sale and purchase of the underlying interests in a portion of the gold. Okay, so that's like a word salad, but you're buying an interest in a portion of gold. You're not buying gold. The HSBC gold tokens utilized in the context of the product are operational tools for recording fractional ownership in the gold. The tokens do not of themselves embody any rights or value. Okay, so the tokens you're buying have no rights or value other than being a record representing fractional ownership. So this is just like if I wrote down on a piece of paper 500 years ago that you bought something, these tokens are performing that function. It's just documenting a transaction. So uh -huh. there's nothing revolutionary about this. And I certainly wouldn't be claiming bragging rights for being the first uh, company or bank to, to do this. So the HSBC gold tokens are therefore evidential only and not subject to custody. So it's just evidence of a transaction. None of the gold tokens are expected to fall within the definition of virtual asset in the anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing ordinance uh, in Hong Kong. Whew. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> so this is just an accounting ledger and that's what you're buying is a number on an accounting ledger. That's huh. what it seems like to me, yes. Yeah. So and we can. They're, they're supposed to go out and, and get a matching amount of gold, but you know, can that gold be rehypothecated? Is it securitized? Uh, uh, this is not uh, gold on a blockchain like they are claiming. It's uh, a, a record of intended gold purchases and sales <laughs> on a centralized ledger. Yeah, and it's fractional, and you can never take physical possession, even if. Even in the event of an insolvency, I mean, you, you just have like hardly any rights here and you have to trade only with HSBC. You can't trade in any other bank. You pretty much have to trade only during the hours they're open or you pay a very steep fee. I mean, this is just I, I don't so, know who this would be a good investment for. I'm trying to imagine like who this would be good for. It's hard for me to come up with that type of person. You can't trade this to another company. You can't trade it to another person. So uh, if you've got a gold coin, you can actually like sell it to another person or swap it for something or go into a coin dealer or sell it to us. Uh, there's just a, a, a hundred ways to liquidate uh, that gold and turn it into something else, either cash or something physical that you want to buy. Uh, and this, there aren't any ways. <laughs> well, there's only one way uh, through HSBC. Yeah. And they yeah. can suspend trading for any reason. <laughs> so, yeah, either willingly or through, you know, a cyber attack or whatever. So anyways, so this whole thing, we can summarize it actually with one of the documents that they have on their website. This is the key facts statement right here under product type. It is a paper gold scheme that tells you everything you uh, need to know. I, I love the word scheme in there. <laughs> yeah. It's a paper gold scheme and they're just admitting this. That is amazing, a paper yes. gold scheme. This is, uh, <clears throat> to me, I think that this is something to be afraid of. Very, uh, th this just sends red, red flags up all over the place. And 
uh, right now is a period of time. I mean, if you look at everything they've put in place with the great taking, uh, you just have to now, it's a time for physical assets. It's a time to make sure, I mean, you can't get by without using the banking system somehow. You have to pay people, you have to pay bills, you have to survive in the modern world. And so you do have to use the banking system. It'd, it'd be very difficult to not use it. Uh, but I wouldn't keep all my eggs in one basket. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so last thing I want to mention on this investment is the another document that have important information, which is 18 pages of risk factors. And we're not going to go through them all here, but there are so many risk factors. Of course, any investment have has risks. But when you add in all these extra layers of one particular bank, one particular company, uh, certain kinds of technology, the risk factors just go up exponentially. So, yeah, no collateral um, market risk. The tokens, there is no market for the tokens, price volatility, trading hours, exchange rate risk because it's priced in U.S. dollars and then converted into Hong Kong dollars, system unavailability, concentration risk, currency risk. I mean, there's so many here. Um, you can go through the settlement delay, credit risk of the bank. There's just so many here. Um, yeah. it's, it's very off-putting to me, this type of investment. And, you know, 99.9% .9 of all the people that are going, you know, it said for the average investor. The average investor never reads this stuff. And so thank you so much for analyzing this because now people, anybody watching this video knows what they're getting into. Yes, exactly. My pleasure. Happy to do it. Um, and one other thing I want to turn people's attention to in case they want to learn more is a video that just dropped. Um, Rebel Capitalist. Swift yeah. just announced new CBDC platform. And I believe you watched this yeah. video already, Mike. Yeah, I just watched it. And, you know, George Gammon is a friend of mine. And I spoke at last year's Rebel Capitalist Live. Uh, and uh, George does a tremendous job of investigative research on all of this stuff. And Swift just announced within 12 to 24 months a CBDC uh, for all of the Swift exchanges. And it is, it's enormous. Uh, this is, um, I, I believe it was, um, I can't remember, I think it was 44,000 banks doing 48 million transactions per hour or something like that. Uh, and this is all going to be done with CBDCs and they have the ability to tokenize physical assets. So eventually, I mean, everybody should watch this video. Go to George's uh, YouTube channel, uh, Rebel Capitalist. Uh, and subscribe to his channel. Uh, you really need to be kept up to date on all of this stuff. We are at a critical time in history. Artificial intelligence is going to be taking, a, a, it, it's just going to turn our worlds upside down in the next few years. And then all of these advancements, like they're trying to keep ahead of this thing with the next great crisis, the, the banks where people are starting to lose faith in currencies and uh, you know, the, the U.S. dollar, the Federal Reserve knows this, the banks know this, and if they can get you trapped into some sort of central bank digital currency where you're on one ledger and there are no other alternatives, this is the way you're going to get paid, this is the way you're going to have to file your taxes, uh, you're, it, it's, they're going to entrap you in this, and it's going to be pleasant at first. That's the way they've got to make it, is they've got to make it a, a pleasant experience where there are advantages to using their CBDC. But then uh, once it's on a single ledger, they have complete control over your life and uh, your house and your car, anything that you've got a loan on can end up on this. Uh, this. It, isn't a, it isn't a distributed ledger. It, it might be distributed among the offices of HSBC or JP Morgan or, you know, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, whatever. Uh, and, uh, but it's, it's basically a centralized ledger that is permissioned, that is within their uh, company. But if the CBDC itself, the, if those transactions are on JP Morgan's ledger, the CBDC is a single ledger 
that would be run by the Federal Reserve. And at that point, you are handing over control of your life to uh, the, the, you know, the government, the banking system, the elites, and they will be able to uh, dictate what types of purchases you make, where you can travel, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, it is a 1984 world. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very dystopian and I don't want to go there. So I'm trying my best to escape uh, this future that, that the elites are trying to lay out for everybody. So uh, have you got any other things to say on this? Well, yeah, I mean, I agree with you, and I think it's easy to get distracted or and swept up in the latest and greatest thing and the newest shiny technology, but uh, it's important to keep it simple, and that's actually the topic of the meme of the day. Keep it simple. Gold and silver are money. Everything else is credit. That's it. Don't yes. get distracted. <laughs> yeah, including this uh, HSBC gold token. Everything else is credit, and this is an IOU for something that may or may not exist that's in their vaults that can only be traded on their system and you can't take delivery of it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. and CBDCs are credit. <laughs> it's all credit, <laughs> hold the real yes. thing. <laughs> okay, I wanna thank you so much for doing the heavy lifting and doing all of this research and basically exposing this for what it is. And for anybody watching this in Hong Kong, be very wary and read all of this stuff and know what you're getting into before you hand over your hard earned currency. And, uh, you know, try to turn your currency into money. Uh, you know, I don't give advice, but that's what I do. I turn my currency into money by buying gold and silver, something that stores value over long periods of, the, of time. Thank you so much, Alan. Thanks, Mike.